Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and welcome to the Ramadan Halakha Human Dignity Series. I'm going to give just a brief intro because um, there is a lot of background noise in my house. No matter how deep I hide in my closet, it still seems to seep through the wall. So we'll get started here in just a bit, but welcome, everyone. I hope your Ramadan is going well. Uh, this is either if this is day four or day five for you, I hope that you've gotten into a nice groove and are enjoying the first third of this month. Um, just a little background. So this series came about um, through a conversation that I had with Rada, who is today's speaker, uh, in which I wanted to um, dedicate a series um, towards focusing on the dignity that Allah has bestowed on humankind and what are the uh, sort of pain points throughout human existence that have diminished that dignity. And inshallah, the series is going to focus on four of those issues, uh, race and racism, class and poverty, uh, environment, and how that diminishes um, the dignity for future generations, um, and gender-based oppression, and which is what we will be discussing today. And so I'd like to introduce to you Rada Ghazal, who is a Islamic scholar. And many of you uh, would be familiar with her because we've been fortunate to have had her at some Muslim space events in the past. Um, so you, you are well aware of just how uh, wonderful and um, deep her knowledge is, and not only of Islam, but also specifically of this topic. Uh, she is the former um, research, oh, I'm gonna mess this up, research fellow, I don't have her CV right in front of me, from Karama. Uh, and she's uh, currently pursuing her PhD at the Catholic University uh, in, Washington, DC. So enough uh, talk from me and let's get to this. Uh, the format will be, Rada inshallah will give a, a 45, 50 minute uh, presentation to which we will follow with a Q and A. You can drop your questions in the chat or you can use the raise your hand uh, reaction um, where we will call on you if you'd like to just ask your question. This is a relatively um, you know, casual gathering. So do feel free during the Q&A to turn on your camera, turn on your microphone and, and ask the questions that you have. So without any further ado, here comes Rada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Kareem for all, for all of you. Inshallah, you are enjoying the fasting of Ramadan. Uh, just today, I was thinking, and we are already like one week in Ramadan, subhanAllah. The days are running, and inshallah, may Allah accept from all of you your good deeds and your fasting. And I would like first to thank uh, Muslim Space and specifically Shadia for inviting me in this series. And inshallah, uh, I will present the topic and I leave time for your questions. And let me share here my screen. <clears throat> Hopefully it's shared now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Today, I was thinking, you know, when we, uh, I was discussing with Shadi about the topic of this series, and I was thinking, subhanAllah, uh, like all of us during Ramadan, we start, even the, the people who don't recite, let's say, Quran during the year, but it's known like Ramadan is the month of the Quran. And every one of us will start, even if he is not reading regularly Quran on a regular pace, let's say, during the other months of the year, everyone is dedicated to start reading the Quran from the beginning till the end or as much as you can. And really, I do appreciate this, uh, let's say, uh, aim to read the Quran. Uh, but I believe sometimes we are so much, you know, focusing on reading and we are not focusing on understanding the meaning. And this is actually a journey. It's not like only in the month of Ramadan, but it should be like a journey throughout all the year to start reading the, the, the Quran with an eye with an eye of understanding, understanding its message, understanding what is the purpose and what's the goal and what's the aim behind that? Uh, 
And for today, I choose from Surat Al Umran verses uh, 35 to 37. And I'll speak about like uh, when we read these verses, what we can get from these verses. Of course, here it's in Arabic. I will just recite uh, them in Arabic and then I'll start dividing uh, one by one uh, in English. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ قالت امرأة عمران رب إني نذرت لك ما في بطني محررا فتقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم فلما وضعتها قالت رب إني وضعتها أنثى والله أعلم بما وضعت وليس الذكر كالأنثى وإني سميتها مريم وإني أعيذك وذريتها من الشيطان الرجيم فتقبلها ربها بقبول حسن وأنبتها زكريا ف فتقبلها ربها بقبول حسن وكفلها زكريا كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا قال يا مريم أنا لك هذا قالت هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب صدق الله العظيم Let's go to the first one which is <coughs> verse 35 When a woman of the house of Imran it's Imrati Imran, the, the wife of Imran. She asked God, she prayed. She was pregnant and she said, Rabbi, oh my sustainer, behold into thee do I vote the child that is in my womb to be devoted to the service, accept it. Then from me verily, though alone are all hearing, all knowing. Just if you look at this verse, every one of you, we have here a pregnant woman. She is asking God, like I am now pregnant. I want this, I am I'm promising you what I have in my womb, I want it to be into your service. And at that time, this is like, at the, at the time, this is the Jewish, because they, they are from the Jewish community. So I want him to be devoted to the service of the temple. And please, she's asking, accept me, accept from me, because you are, you, you, you hear, you know, you, are, you know, I am sincere in that. So actually, Al Imran here, or the wife of Al Imran here, she was asking for a boy, because the the society, and the culture, and the mentality, only accept men to be in the service of the temple. And as if there was like some somehow to some extent what we see in our communities and in our culture and in our societies that the mosque is to be held by men and there's no space for women. And if there is a space, it will be behind. If there is like a way, it will be a barrier. So all the time they are putting the restriction. And here coming out of this culture, she, she is not like discriminating, but she, this is how the way it goes in her culture. So she said, I want 
a baby in her mind, a boy, baby. So I can put this baby in the service of the chamber. So now it's so interesting for me, the following verse. If you go to the following verse, but, and this is but, like in, in contrast to what she was asking for, when she had given birth to the child, she said she was like, oh my God, oh my sustainer. Behold, I have given birth to a female. This is not what I have asked for. I've asked for a boy. I don't want the girl. I've asked for a boy for the service. And as if she is in a shock, you know, like I ask you for something, I told you I will put it in your service and now you give me a girl? And look at the answer. Uh, here, what the, the, the verses is saying. The while God has been full, fully aware of what she had, like give birth. Of course, he you know, but like as if she, she, she is not telling God like this is a female. She, she was speaking out of look, astonishment, out of surprise, out of not believing. And then the following this one, a lot of interpreters and scholars that they comment on this, and no male child she might have hoped for could ever have been like this female. Allah is telling her, you are astonished, I give you a female, not a boy as you, you, you wish. Allah is trying to say to her that the, 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 the female I have given to you is more much better or it's far better than the boy you have asked. You have asked for a boy for the service, but I give you this female and this female, it will have like, you know, she has a great status. And as if in this sentence, Allah, of course Allah can give her like the boy she has asked for, and it can be in the, in the, in the service and there is, will be nothing, but Allah during or be, through this verse, he wants to break this patriarchal mentality. He wants to break this like the male is for the service of the temple and the female is not for the service of the temple. He wants to tell us, you as a human, you put this limitation. I have created you equal. I have, you know, you, have, you know this verse in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. We have given dignity to, to all the children of Adam, to all human beings. And also this is very important here. When Allah is give, saying in the Holy Quran, and if we are believing in this Quran, when he is saying I've given dignity to human being. So it means every human being has a dignity. Every human being has to be respected whether he is male or female, whether he is Muslim or non-Muslim, whether he is black or white. So in Islam, we, we don't have these differences. Allah want to break it and he break it through like a miracle because Maryam, Maryam or Mary, the, the child of the wife of Amran, she was by herself a miracle. And some scholars, they say, Maryam, she is a prophet or she has the prophethood status because Allah has revealed to her. Of course, other scholars, or not all of them, they, they agree on this, but she has been given a very high status in Islam. And imagine for me as a Muslim, when I read the Quran, I would expect, for example, to find the surah with the name of Aisha radiallahu anha, or with the name of Khadija radiallahu anha, or with the name of any of the companion. The only woman mentioned by name in the Quran, Maryam. And the only surah in the Quran that has a name for a woman, it's Maryam. And this is to show you Allah from, from the time of, let's say, the, 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 
the Jewish community, and then we have the Christian community, and then we have the Islamic community. We have this patriarchal culture that the woman is to be down and the male is to be in control and to be in, especially here, she, she said, I want it to be for the service. It means like the, the religious leaders, they are only expected to be men. So Allah, he wants to break this patriarchal thinking and stereotype by giving this and by, by saying in the Quran that no male child she might have ha hoped for could ever have been like this female. So don't say, this is like, let's say it's a, an honor from God. When God gives an honor to a person, it does not matter whether he is old or young or female or male, we are created equals. The, 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 the most important thing is who is qualified to be the leader, whether a male or a female, who is qualified to, to be a scholar, to have the knowledge, and till now, I'm shocked, like I come from like the Eastern society and I would understand this patriarchal control in, in our culture. But even here, when I came to the US, a lot of mosques will, will think like the wife of Um Amran, will still thinking in that culture, will think about like men has to be in the mosque. Even some of them, they will not allow, for example, women to be on the board community committee. They will not allow, for example, women to have a vote in the mosque. The man has to decide. And if she wants to come and pray in the mosque, she has to be behind the barrier. Her voice is not allowed to be heard. And this is con com completely contrary to the Quranic message, to the message of the Quran, in which we believe, in which we read all the time. And the reading, and it's so interesting for me, like one time I listened to the Sheikh. If you go to the doctor, and the doctor give you a prescribe for you, written for you a prescription, and you keep reading this prescription, you will never be healed from your sickness or illness. You have to apply the medicine. You have to apply the message. So unless you go to the pharmacy and you buy the medicine and you start taking it, nothing will change. You will not be healed. It's the same. Reading, I'm not like, saying reading Quran is, no, reading Quran is very important, but it's, it's not enough. You will take reward for reading, but the most important thing is to apply the message of the Quran, to apply what Allah and tell us. And the first word has, that has been re, re, revealed is Iqra. Iqra with the meaning you have to read and understand, not reading to repeat it like a recorder, no, you have to understand every single message Allah is trying to, to give to you. And then said, and I have named her Mary. I, I give her the name of Mary. And verily, I seek the protection for her and her offspring against Satan. So I'm asking you to protect her. I am asking you, when Allah said, to you, this is the girl is better than the boy I asked. She, she now she she understand the message she got the message and she said Khalas, if you want this female i'll keep my promise she will be in the service of the temple and i am i name her mary and you protect her and imagine now just i'm imagining the situation imagine yourself in a culture which prohibit a female to be in the service of a temple and how brave this woman to accept what Allah has, let's say, revealed to her in a way, and to put this girl in the service of temple. She is actually challenging all, you know, the, the patriarchal culture and the society and what people are thinking. And of course, this is, will not be easy for her, neither it will be easy for Mary. But when you when she knows that this is the truth from Allah, this is what Allah wants, she wants something, 
but Allah wants something and she surrender herself and she accept the Quranic message despite it's different from what she is living and from the culture because why am I mentioning and focusing on this because sometimes when you speak to people most of them they will say we cannot change the culture will not accept the community will not accept we are actually following our desire and our culture and putting the culture above the Quranic message. I, I do understand and I do agree we have to respect our culture and our customs as long as they don't contradict what Allah wants and when the, what the Prophet wants from us. We cannot accept something which contradicts with the message or with the Quranic message. Allah wants all of us as human beings, as male and female, to work together, to serve him. It's not like, you know, be, because I'm created a female, then I am deprived from the service of God. And of course, now the, the, the temple, if you, you have to understand when I say the temple or the mosque or the service of God, the temple for them was let's say in our, in our modern, it's like a university or like the bigger, like the bigger like uh, spot for everything, where, where everything, now when we say mosque, it's a very like specific part of the life. It's mosque is one part of the community, one part of, let's say the center. If I have a center, let's say, if I have an Islamic center, a mosque will be just one part of this Islamic center. And for them, for the temple was the center. So just I want to, to clarify this because in our contemporary thoughts, when I speak about the mosque, we are just speaking about the place where we go and pray. Imagine Allah, so Allah does not want you only to be present in the in the in the mosque for prayer or to be like as a female to be there on the board no he wants you as female and male to be together in every step in this life on every level in every decision so it's not only for going to the mosque so imagine how the situation we are now we are not allowing the woman just for the mosque, not to be in the in the in the in the in every aspect of life. Or sometimes we allow the woman to be in, in the university in every aspect, let's say. And then when it comes to, to the mosque, she is not allowed to participate. She is not allowed to speak to men. Her voice shouldn't be heard. She is not allowed to be on the board. The, you know, you allow, what is this contradiction? If you're behaving like this, if you are putting the woman outside of the mosque, equal to men, and then inside the mosque, less, as if you are saying our religion even is on a less level, Islam, or you are giving the message, my Quran and my Islam is less what, what human beings thinks. I'm giving her like, you know, I'm really astonished like we are allowed to mix with men and speak at the universities in conferences when it comes to the mosque it's completely upside down why in 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 islam there's no hypocrisy everything is clear you mix with each other with the level of dignity of respect of helping and you look at the woman as a human being created by God who had dignity, intelligence, scholarship. And just if we try to apply these verses, this Ramadan, if you just pick one idea from the Quran and you, I know like change is not easy because for example, if you want to change, you will find obstacles all over. Sometimes from your own family, from your own friends, from your own community, from, it's not, but if you start understanding the Quran and convince, because we don't want to fight with people. Our aim is to educate people. We want people to understand that this is the Quranic message. This is what Allah tells us. And this is, you cannot do it unless you are educated, unless you have the knowledge of the Quran. 
as I say, it's okay to read the Quran, but this is will not improve you. It's very important. And even if you don't know Arabic, now we have a lot of uh, tafasir interpretation of the Quran. They are allowed online. Uh, they are online. You can access any books. And there is like, I think there is a very, uh, I'm not sure this is a new one. If I put it, if it's clear here, or maybe I can send it to you, Shadia. Maybe it's not coming. It's called the Study Quran and is for Sayyid Hussein Nasr. I think it was published in, um, in 2015. And this book is called the Study Quran. You can just purchase it through Amazon. And it's a very interesting book. They are trying to put only the, the Quranic uh, verses in English. And then in the commentary, they are putting all the different explanation and in a very modern way and in a very modern language. It's not like you know a language you wouldn't understand because sometimes when you go to the uh, tafasir, the old tafasir, it's very like old here. It's, it's written, it's very like contemporary and it's written in a language that's contemporary and understandable. And it's nice that all the time they are mentioning here if there is something similar in the Bible or in the Old Testament. So this is will give you broader information about the Quranic verse. So returning to the verse, and then, so when the wife of Al Imran, she accepted this girl and she accepted her. So, and so her sustainer, Allah accept her to be in the service of the temple. And وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا he, he, he just like as if he, take, he took care of her. She is very special. She is from the time she was a baby in the womb of her mom, she was like promised to be for the service of Allah. So Allah himself took care of her. And Zakaria, he was the, the husband of her aunt, and he was the one who looked after her and who provide her. And of course, Mary, as he says, she has like what we call in Arabic, this karamat, or this is higher standard or higher honor. And then she, when Zakaria come to her, he will see, of course, the, there are a lot of interpretation, but one of the interpretation it says when he come to her during the summertime he will find the fruit of the winter time in front of her and vice versa when he come in the winter like when it is winter he will find the fruit of the summer and Zakaria will ask her from where you get to that and she will say, this is from Allah. So of course, like she has very specific status and more than this, Mary, Mary or Maryam, as we say in Arabic, after she grow up and then she has Jibril, you know, come and give her the tiding that she will be now pregnant with a prophet, with Jesus alayhi salam. And imagine how strong this woman, the same idea, I'm returning to the same idea when, when we are facing with the culture and patriarchal and all of this. Now imagine she has been in the service of the temple, a very righteous life, and then now she's pregnant. Imagine like a girl, she is like just very young and now she's pregnant. And she has looked like she she just she cannot handle being within the community and she 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 went far away from them. And then when Allah told her, like she was about to give the, the birth to the, the baby. Of course, look, when she was just very like a baby, Allah will give her the fruit of the summer and winter. And when she was about to deliver the baby, imagine the situation, she is in a situation, she has nobody around her and she is about to, to, to deliver the baby. What Allah said to her, Try to shake the tree, the date tree. Imagine if if any one of you knows the 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 trunk, the trunk of the 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 date tree, nobody can you know shake that one. But Allah wants also to give a message. 
even if you are a female, if you, even if you are persecuted, oppressed by the society, you do your best and then Allah will give you the support. Allah, imagine in that weak, let's say situation, she is about to deliver a baby. God can give her the date without telling her like, just to try to shake the date tree. If you check the tree, the dates will come to you. Allah could just send her the date without checking. He wants to teach us, you have to be strong. You have to work hard. You have to be sincere. And then if Allah see your sincerity, if Allah knows in your heart there is good, intention there is sincerity you want to implement the god message he will give you more and then imagine also her obedience to god when god asks her you have now to go and to carry this child and to go to the community and of course nobody will accept her and now when she comes and she is carrying the baby she, she was silent. Allah asked her or make her silent. And the baby start speaking in his cradle. And here is also very important word he said it. The first word that Jesus said when he spoke in the cradle, قَالَ inni Abdullah, I am the servant of God. So again here that the woman now of Al-Umran, she asked for a boy. But this boy, or Jesus alayhi salam, he has been given through Mary. So the whole connection, if you look at the series, how Allah wants to say you complement each other. You, nobody is higher, whether a woman or a boy, you, when I choose and when I give the honor for prophethood, the woman is not less. And when he said, Inni Abdullah, this is very important actually when you say Abdullah for either male or female. What's the meaning of Abdullah? Of course, if, I, if you look at any translation, you will find Abd is translated as servant and whether even if i say servant of god the word servant itself it has the connotation of being inferior of being less and actually this is not let's say to some extent a good translation but in the translation they are trying to translate the word and the word abd but unless you study the arabic language and you know, what's the meaning of Abd? You know, in Arabic language, we have, you know, when we say about, when we speak about the concept of love, the concept of love, it has level of degrees and it has 10 degrees. Like you will find different words for that. You say, al ushq Al-Hiyam, Al-Gharam, Al-Ta'alluq, al it's like just a category of love and the highest, the highest level of love relationship is al-ibadah, the worship, to be abd. So for example, sometimes we say, this person loves this woman to the degree that he is worshiping her. So the worship, when I say, inni abdullah, when, when the wife of, Al Imran, she asked for the boy and then he gives the girl. She said, I accept. I am a servant if we want to translate. I am Abdullah. I accept what you have said. Mary, when Allah gave her the pregnancy, even it was like she said, I accept, as if she is saying, I am Abdullah. And Jesus, he said, started, I am Abdullah. And Abdullah means I am worshiping God. I am believing in what God has revealed and told me to the highest level. And this is 
the highest level a human being can re reach in his relation with God, to reach the status of ibadah, of being abd lillah. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was given the honor to be called Abdullah only three times in the Quran. In Al-Isra wal Ma'raj, when he, when he, in his journey, Subhan alladhi asra bi abdihi. Because he reached a very high standard and stage and he comes very in a very close relationship to Allah. So he was given the title Abd. So when we say Abdullah, you have to have this honor. Like I am worshiping God with the utmost love. And also Prophet Muhammad, he was giving the title also in, in, the, in the level of calling to, to, to Allah, calling people to the unity of Allah or to the concept of monotheism of Allah. And also it, 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 it comes like all this, when we connect all these concepts together, because also we have the Quran, we have tafsirul Qur'ani bil Qur'an, the interpretation of Qur'an by Qur'an. You feel all of this is connected. If I want to understand the message of the Quran, I have really to start studying the Quran. And if I want really to reach this level of ibadah, of worshiping God, it's not only by reciting Quran and by reading it like a recorder. I have really to start researching and understanding what's the message What's the Quranic message? What is God is trying to tell me through these verses? Because these verses is revealed not only to, to read them, to apply them. So if I just pick the verses and I start reading and understand that God's message that we have to be equal. All human beings have the right to have dignity and to be respected for just being the creation of Allah. Our mentality, our societies, our communities, they will start to change. Even if the change is hard at the beginning, but when you, when you have this aim or goal and you have the knowledge in your heart also and in your mind that I am applying the Quranic message, it will create difference. It will create difference because we, we all want to create the difference. We want to be Muslims in the way Allah wants us to be. We want, when somebody sees us, we want them to see we are applying the message of the Quran. And this cannot be happen, cannot, it's impossible without knowledge without education, without studying the Quran. In order to graduate from any university, you have to study like 20 or 25 years. In order to understand the Quran, it will be impossible just to read it during Ramadan. It has to be like, the Quran has to be your companion in your journey, in your life. Even if you start with one step, with one word, with one verse, and just you keep and continue. Best action are the continuous one, even if they are little. Even if you start just every month to research one verse in the Quran and to ask and to try, not ask only one person. No, now, alhamdulillah, we have the luxury of knowledge. We have the luxury of conferences, of meeting. Imagine even now in, during the COVID-19, we are still able to meet and actually as if Allah opens more ways for us. I am now here in Maryland, you are in, 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 in Austin, maybe some of you out of Austin, still we can meet and still we can learn and still we can discuss. So on the day of judgment, we don't have any excuse that we don't know or we are ignorant. So inshallah, may Allah give me and you the knowledge 
and give us also the sincerity to apply the Quran in our life to be like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Aisha radiallahu anha described him he was a walking Quran on earth wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you for listening wow 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 jazakallah that that was incredible it was perfect you really i think um opened up this series describing exactly what it is that we are trying to understand that dignity that allah has promised has has blessed us with and how it is imperative on every one of us to uphold it and that we must confront the issues that are diminishing the dignity of others so i know i've got questions but let's see what do we have uh feel free again you can turn on your camera turn on your mic pop it in the chat group um thank you for suggesting the study quran it is definitely my go-to translation uh any other questions what do you guys have how are we feeling how are we going to take this knowledge and uh, enhance our community, enhance our lives, enhance those around us. Um, are there any other, um, the, the study Quran is great. It's great. And it sourced a lot of tafsirs uh, over centuries and it compiled it um, in a way that is very easy to read. Are there any other uh, tafsirs that you go to for uh, verses or words that you want you want more information about that that aren't fi found in the study Quran? Yeah, um, this is, uh, I try all the time to be updated. And now I think the Oxford, the encyclopedia of Oxford, they are uh, still, I think it's, it's coming soon. I'm not sure if it will come this year or the next year, the beginning of ne next year. I try all the time to be updated with the books specifically for the study Quran, for Quran interpretation, because now it's written, with a language that is contemporary, but also I would really suggest the translation of Muhammad Asad is one of the best translation for the Quran also. And he give you a different uh, interpretation. Uh, this is one of the best. It's, um, I can later, uh, I'm not sure if you should be familiar with it. It's Asad, Muhammad Asad. He was actually a convert. He was a Jewish person and then he converted and he went to Saudi Arabia and uh, he uh, he learned the Arabic language. So when he gave the translation, he was really like uh, have the skills of speaking the two languages. So the translation is very good because unless you master the English and the Arabic, the translation will not come out good. And I am not sure one of the good translation interpretation for the Quran, because you ask about the interpretation, it's a Razi. Of course, like every, you have to read the interpretation with the eyes of the author and his own context. But this is also one of the uh, inter good inter uh, interpretation and commentary on the Quran. I want to mention also here, when we look at the different interpretations of the Quran, uh, you have to put in mind every author or every commenter of, or every interpreters, he focus on something. So it's not enough to read one interpretation. For example, some Arazi, for example, he is known to be very excellent in logic. He will, you will see his logic in the interpretation of the Quran. If you go, for example, to the Sufi interpretation, for example, for Ibn Arabi, you will, you will find this Sufism is reflected in the interpretation of the Quran. You cannot say this is wrong or this is right, but everyone is reflecting his own methodology on the interpretation of the Quran. Some of them, for example, I think as the Makhshari, uh, if I'm not wrong, it focus on the linguistics and on the uh, semantic analysis. So in order to get to this encyclopedia knowledge of the Quran, actually you have to e equip yourself with all of this. I'm not saying now just you have to go and it's, it's a process. You have, for example, to start one by one, step by step. And 
for me, why? Because I'm not sure if most maybe of the uh, now the uh, audience, they don't speak Arabic because of this, I suggest first of all the translation, because it's important to read a good translation. And this is also study Quran and then go also to the old tafasir. And even when I read the old tafasir, you know, you might agree or disagree. You have to, to, to put in mind that this person wrote this tafsir in his own context, in his, within his own culture. Like, for example, this is the study Quran. It's written contemporary. So the language and the way it was written, it's, it's uh, let's say, suitable and convenient for this, for this age. So you might not agree with everything, but this, like, when you start this journey of studying Quran and of looking at different interpretation of the Quran, it gives you a more broad view of the Quranic message. And you have to put in your mind, when you look at the Quran, you have to, to look at it with this like broad vision, not like, you know, you have to know what are the, the, the main philosophy of the Quran. For example, dignity. If there is any interpretation for any for any uh, scholar which goes against the dignity of a human being, it's not accepted because the interpretation has to go with the philosophy of the Quran. If any interpretation goes against, for example, knowledge and seeking knowledge and iqra, it's not accepted because these are human beings. They might make mistakes. We uh, we we respect our scholars. We respect the the people who who give us the knowledge. But all the time, we have to read with a critical eye, and we have to put in our mind that they are human beings. They they might have mistakes, and they, nothing wrong. They did their best, and now it's our time to do our best to get to the right, let's say, Quranic message. Thank you for that. I um, I think you brought up a really good a really good point that we have to remind ourselves that the interpreters and the translators really are products of their uh, of their society and their and their time and place, um, which which brings up, you know, the question right now. What we are experiencing in our society is 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 you know really a a new wave of a push for equal equality, equal rights. Um, something that could would I think it would be safe to say was unfathomable by any of the the translators and interpreters of any time. Um, would you would you are there any current interpretations and translations that you are aware of that are bringing more of a, of a modern context? I don't think um, and the reason I ask this is because I think what you're highlighting, like I've never looked at that story of wife of Imran and, and how she, uh, what she was trying to, to give to God, right? A child to the temple. And when she said, well, it's a girl and I'm going to give this daughter, I, I'll accept this and I will still give my child to the temple. I mean, wow, we thought the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Muhammad was revolutionary in what it did for women. But what she was doing even then was, was uh, quite remarkable. I mean, that was very forward thinking. She was really going to push at that patriarchy. And I don't think a lot of interpreters have really highlighted on that little bit in which you did today. Not so much like, okay, the, the, the boy is not like the girl, the girl is not like the boy, but that she said, okay, I'm going to send my daughter, knowing the society that I exist in, to the temple nonetheless. I mean, that is quite remarkable. Um, and so now we can look at that in, in, in modern context and we can say, you know, this is what Allah had instructed her in her time. You know, we have a much higher responsibility now because there, there is more equality. There is more understanding. So are there any scholars or um, resources for us, aside from the Qurans that we that you've recommended, um, that that we can maybe go to. Yeah, actually, now I'm attending a course at Georgetown University. It's called Quran and its readers, and actually, it's interesting. And I have actually some books, but um, they are 
a little bit academic. I have just to go through my library. I've downloaded most of the books and maybe I will share with you some of them. There are some of them, they are really good. There is, I think, one scholar, I think he passed away in 2015, his contemporary and uh, Izzy Zusto, I think he's a Japanese Muslim scholar, and he is going to, he is giving an interpretation of the Quran regarding the semantic uh, analysis of the words in the Quran. And it's very interesting actually, and he's a very good scholar. Uh, I think I have some of his books. I will look more and just, I will send you by email. And if just for any reason because now it's the end of the semester for me and it's a lot of stress so if i forget for any reason just remind me and i'll try to research more and send it to you by email so you can share that would be absolutely wonderful i'm sure everybody would would truly appreciate that we do have a resource page um, on the muslim space website that where we like to post uh, links to um, either lectures or books um, that may broaden an understanding of Islam, especially in a context that isn't often heard. So thank you. I would appreciate that. And of course, no rush. We know how busy you are. Mashallah, you, I, I know that this has been a tough, uh, strenuous year for you, but but we all appreciate that you're doing this this work so that we can learn from you. May Allah always reward you. Uh, for your efforts. Um, well, uh, you and I can talk all day long. That's easy. Uh, but I do want to see if there's anyone else that has any questions. It's not often that we are able to uh, bring Gada in um, and you you don't want to regret missing an opportunity to ask her a question. And it can be even on, uh, you know, we can branch off of this topic. She's um, quite knowledgeable uh, about many other areas. Anybody else? Okay. All right. One more question from me then. Um, uh, last time you were here, you um, we talked a little bit about this topic, but also about how do we take this information and how do we make this change in our community? Um, and I know that this is a start, even just arming ourselves uh, with this with this foundation of 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 what God has, the message that is in the Quran um, because we don't we don't hear it very often. yeah what yeah, go ahead. No, 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 please complete your question. No, I, I was just sort of thinking out loud. I mean, I think the biggest struggle is um, how do we create more spaces, not just for our girls, but for our boys as well? Um, you know, you you said something in your talk about how everything is sort of equal on the outside and then it's not like that inside the mosque. That is going to turn away, not just the girls, and we know that it has, we know that it has, but it's also going to turn away the boys. Um, how can we share this with the leadership in a way that says, hey, we are going to be a dying species of American Muslims if we don't change, if we don't become um, a welcoming place, not just for the able-bodied man, right? Because it's also, we also have issues of, of limited access to folks with, um, you know, any type of disability. Um, any type of um, non-traditional, non-normal, non-normative uh, households, right? You have families that have, um, uh, they've got a, a dual religious household and maybe a Christian parent and a Muslim parent or a non-Muslim parent and a Muslim parent, and they don't always feel welcomed in the mosque. How, how, do, we, how do we take this to the mosque and, and explain to them that if we don't make a change, then we are going to diminish not just our dignity, but also the numbers that attend. Yeah, this is very important, actually, issue here uh, when I come. First of all, first of all, you it's very important to start with yourself. You have to be convinced and you have also to bring the evidence from the Quran. Like today, for example, if you come and there is the interpretation, even traditional interpretation and old interpretation about like this gersh that the wife of Al Imran she got is better than the baby boy. So the most important thing, you are sincere, you have the education and you have the, the evidence from the Quran and or from the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and to be sincere and humble, not to go because some, some of us, I don't want to, or most, 
when they get this knowledge, they come become very like excited and they go with the this idea like fighting with people. It does not work like this. You have to women you tell hikmata faqad utiya khairan kathira. Whoever is given wisdom, he has a lot of good. So you have to be wise. How to, because if your aim is to fight and to take the leadership or it does not work. The aim is I want them to be educated. I want them to be convinced. I want the men and we don't want to like, we, we need men. It's not about like, I want to be the leader because I am a woman and I don't want the man. No, we want both men and women to work together. And the one who is qualified, he will take the position, whether a man or a woman. Like for example, if I have a woman, she is a scholar, I cannot ask the man just to come and to give the lecture just because he's a man. And we cannot accept that in the normal life, but we do accept it in religion. And this is show our sholo understanding of our religion and of the Quranic message. First of all, we have to be sincere. We have to work on ourselves because it's a gradual step. It, the change cannot be like something you press the bottom and you achieve that. No, a prophet Muhammad, he's a prophet and he has the Quran and he has the companions around him and they are like, chosen by by God and it takes him 23 years it's not like something I wanted and it will happen but we have to start spreading the knowledge and it's very important to spread spread the knowledge on the basis of the Quran I don't want like anybody to say you are calling for equality because you are feminist you are because you are this and this I'm not against all of these they are doing their best but I want it, especially when I come to the mosque and the leader, that it comes from the Quran. This is what the Quran said to me. This is what is the Quran trying me to do. So I want to be a better Muslim. And it's very important also, any, when, when you choose a leader, for example, now I am in a Potomac area in Maryland, and now just the, we have one of the imam, he resigned and they want to, uh, to uh, employ another imam. It's very important to choose the leader, whether for imam or for the board committee, like they have a very strict conditions who can be the imam. And not only about like he has the knowledge, no, about his character and his personality and his thinking and like, you know, he's open-minded about how he, he, and they interview him many times. I like it. I like this process because if you want to put a person as a leader and as a representative, because now he is, or he or she, she is representative, not only about only herself, she is representing Islam and Quran. So there must be qualified people. So if I see somebody who is not qualified, I don't want like just to take him out. No, he can still. But in Islam, you have every person or every human being has to be qualified to the position. And if you are not doing this, you are actually doing injustice. And Allah say this is very central point in Islam to do injustice. We thought like we do injustice if, for example, we speak badly about or we take the right of somebody or, no, just if you put a person who is not qualified in a position, then it's a disaster. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you assign a, a, a job, to an unqualified person, it's the day of judgment with the meaning that it's symbolic meaning is a disaster. And we can, you know, like when we go to the successful, for example, companies, why they are successful? Because they know how to choose their leaders. And then when we come to the mosque, anybody can be a leader. Anybody can do this. No. You know, even Allah created us on levels. We have created you levels. And why when it comes to the mosque, we anybody can be? No, there is a leadership. And I think when I came to Austin, I gave one lecture about the leadership in the Quran. 
and the characteristics. And Shadia, you can share this. I think it's still available if, if you have the PowerPoint or I can also send it to you. So it's very important to choose the people who will be the leaders, to choose the people who will be on the board of committee. Of course, we will not, everyone, we will disagree, but there, as I say, there are basic things, basic philosophies, we have to agree on them. And then if we have different ideas or different interpretation, that's fine. The most important thing, we respect each other. And also it's very important to work on the youth. Working on the youth is very important and actually on the children. And as you say, like now, if I don't see if, for example, if I, even if I'm a boy and I don't see the, the participation of women and girls, I myself, I don't want to, to come because what I see outside is completely opposite. It's, I feel like this hypocrisy. Outside I behave, I can speak to the girls, I can, you know, doing like, let's say programs, uh, organization, uh, voluntary work. When it comes to the mosque, everything is haram and prohibited by the name, under the name of Islam and Quran, and under the name of Prophet Muhammad. When you are doing this, you are doing injustice to Prophet Muhammad, injustice to God, injustice to the Quranic message. This is a zulm. And there's a lot of verses of the Quran about don't practice injustice. Ya ibadi, inni harramtu zulm ala nafsi. God is saying, oh, my crea creations, or my servants, I have prohibited unjust on myself. Don't be unjust. So if we start just understanding this concept and trying to spread this, like now you heard this lecture, if you try to spread the knowledge within your, just, you know, your children, your husband, your father, your mother, your uncle, your aunt, they might not accept. Like as you say, when, when, when the wife of Al Amra, when she put this girl, nobody would accept that. Everybody will be, but you have not to act in like, for example, as a fighting, you have to have this mercy you want them to learn with your friends, with your communities. And as you say, education, organization, thinking, reading, consulting. We need to, you know, we, we what happens with the Muslim, this fragmentation, we need to have the contribution of every human being, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to live among the Jewish people and the Christian people, receive them in his mosque, speaking to them, dealing with them. They will come for him when they have fighting or they want him as a judge, why? because they respect him. He, he is a person who applies justice in every level. So if we want, we, if we want, we are now in a situation, we are not able to attract our Muslims, not the Jewish or the, the Christians with whom we are living and interacting every day. How weak our faith and our knowledge is. If you want to improve, if you want to get this life and the afterlife, you can get it by knowledge. Hopefully Absolutely. it's covered. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah, exactly, exactly. Yes, and I think that that's great. Yes, we, sh we cannot um, be unjust. We cannot be oppressive. And on top of it, we also have to stand up against injustices, even if it's against ourselves, even if it's against our, our kin and our family. And I think that those are part and parcel with each other. You know, we have, we are commanded not to inflict an injustice upon anyone else. And when you see an injustice, you have to call it out. Yeah, this is, and it's, it's, it's repeated many times of the Quran. Yes. Even if it's you, yes. you, because sometimes yourself does not want that because it's more convenient for you to stay the way you are because the change and improving it's a struggle. It's not something easy. It's a jihad. This is a jihad, jihad in nafs, to struggle your own nafs. And if we want to be Muslims as God in the Quran, we have to struggle every second in our life because it's not easy. It's really 
a great mission. May Allah give us, you know, the 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 ability to carry this mission and the honor to carry this mission. Amen. 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 Um, all right, guys, last chance. We're not going to get Gada back again for a while because she is busy. Any questions? Any comments? Um, I hope that you've enjoyed this talk. I know I have. Uh, this has just been absolutely fantastic. Rada, you, you opened up this series. I feel bad for those that have to follow you. You should, you know, you were the opening act that is, that has taken, uh, really, really. Inshallah, the inshallah, inshallah, they will be better than me and can, they can contribute inshallah. And I, I hope I can attend also and benefit and learn from them inshallah. Inshallah, I would love to see you. We will be back here next uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. for you, Reda, uh, with Dr. Bilal Ansari from the Hartford Seminary. I believe he's the director of the Islamic Chaplaincy Program, and he's going to be talking about race and racism. Uh, I am looking forward to that. I absolutely love this talk. I will be, I know there are folks that are watching it on our, on our website who uh, missed out on the question and answer session, but they'll at least have been able, were able to watch you. This is up on YouTube. Um, and uh, anyone, I hope you all enjoyed your time and inshallah, have a blessed rest of your fast today, your Ramadan, make the most of it. And inshallah, we'll see you again soon. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Assalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullah.